Welcome to Londa. 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 And Londa, big cave. It's known for its natural cliffs and caves. Yep. Okay, I think you can actually go into the caves and see uh, like tombs and all this kind of stuff that are so famous around this Taraj region. And there are guys that have lanterns that you can hire out. Uh, but yeah. we have a GoPro light and our phone lights that we're going to try to give it a go with that. Um, the admission price 15,000 for adults so 30 total the kids are free and there is an that's because we're kitas holders so because we have a work permits our, our kitas we get the domestic traveler price the international price if we did not have those kitas would be 30,000 per person so about double morning Poggy. hello good good <laughs> everybody good yeah yeah so this is such an amazing place. Aru is explaining to the kids what this whole place is and how when we go into the caves, we'll see all these square coffins in there. He was just discussing about the noble class people are buried up high. And these are all the lower class people. And fascinating how these coffins are all just stacked up. And even today, this cave is still used for burials uh, today, which is really fascinating. Some of the stuff we've seen before were like hundreds of years ago. Well, this is a very active place for funerals today. All right, so we're heading inside the cave now. Aru is really explaining again what looks like a bunch of water bottles and cigarettes and beetle nut. That's actually not trash. That is donations, honorings from the family to the deceased. So they will come in and bring things like, um, you know, this for example is uh, offerings for for family members of the deceased. And then you work your way around. And you can see some of these ancient uh, coffins are in the shapes of bulls or pigs. Now, if it's a bull shape, it is an unwed man. And if it's a pig shape, it's an unwed woman. So a single, single men, single women get those uh, special carved coffins back in the day. And then these are all the effigies. Wow. And to do an effigy, I mean, it's something I can't quite remember what Aru said, but like 24 water buffalo sacrifice for one of those effigies. So you can see, I mean, think of just the number of sacrifices that go on, but this cave structure is beautiful. Certainly one of the prettiest we've seen so far in Indonesia, but okay. So the family's going into the cave now. Ooh, very slippery. Oh, Pagi. Pagi, hello. All right, so into the dark crypt we go. Uh, I'm gonna grab phones, uh, GoPro lights, and then uh, we'll, we'll start back up once we head in. All right, so as we head into the cave, uh, Aru did point out that we are allowed to touch the cave walls, but we should not touch any actual skulls directly. And again, this is not trash, this is donation. Well, so not touching the skulls is interesting because in Bali, when we were there looking at those skulls, they were like, oh, pick them up, handle them. So it's just a very different uh, belief system. So you can see this cave is, oh, it's kind of hard to get up here. Ooh. Okay, there's, yeah, let's pull this off. There we go, so there's the family. It's okay, Pori. No, no, scary. Mommy's here, daddy's here. Yeah, I'm on my back. Boy, it is, these steps are so slippery. So you have to really be uh, flexible <laughs> to get back in. Watch Forrest, hey Kelly. Okay. Yep. There you go, Forrest. Good job, buddy. Nice and low. Almost there. Not yet. Not yet. Get up. Keep going, Kelly. Yeah. Okay, bye. Yeah. Yep. Slow. There we go. All right, so we're kind of working away. We just came out of this little teeny area, so you have to really crawl to get through there. But you come out and you see these baby caskets, more skulls, these cigarettes. These are cigarette donations all through here. You can see money that the family has offered, like certainly something that the uh, human used to wear. Maybe that's, uh, I don't know what that is, but some, oh, it looks like, a, looks like a baby, like a crib or something. Wow, and there's more more caskets in the back, way down there. 
So they just stack them, uh, stack them deep in here. Oh, here's more. Okay. Some more skulls. More caskets. This one's under plastic. Some cigarettes. Oh, even more. So Aru just told us an amazing story about these two skulls right here and all this. So these skulls, Lobo and Angui. So it's really a Romeo and Juliet story where Lobo and Angui uh, were madly in love with each other and wanted to get married. This is this is a true story. This was back in the 1970s when this happened. Uh, but the families dis disapproved. It wouldn't... Uh, um, allow the marriage. So Lobo and Agui were actually first cousins and because they were so close the families didn't want them to marry so they ended up killing themselves. They hung themselves from trees uh, because you know their families would had to forbid the wedding and again that really just comes across as your Romeo and Juliet love stories. Now when Aru shared that story that brought up a lot of questions from our kids like why would they kill themselves and so on and so forth so we'll talk to them more about that later but it is uh wow those that's them right there lobo and Angui uh together in the afterlife all right and here's a lot more of what aru was talking about Whoa. a lot more coffins and you just never know which way you're gonna look and what you'll see but flowers coffins offerings all throughout here as Aru shares the information with Granite, Cedar Forest, and Kelly. Pretty fascinating stuff. So you can see um, really a picture of the Last Supper. There's a, you know, these are all Christian, uh, Christian believers here. And this used to, all these that have collapsed in here, this was all standing, but just through time and dampness, it all collapses down. And you can see a very popular space. There's actually more groups coming up over here. I just heard the name Romeo and Juliet, so that that guy is sharing the story with them. Yeah, it definitely takes teamwork to get to get out of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at that. Good Lord, it's like you are on your hands and knees. You're good. Oi, jeez. Tight squeeze. Look at that ceiling. I'm coming, buddy. Don't worry. I got a thick head anyway. Oh, that's so nice. There we go. Whew. What a cave system. I mean, you just never know where you look, uh, where you're going to see a, a casket or a skull, but they are just all intertwined. And there's different chambers you can take. I mean, I can certainly see old wood way up in that space there. So something's got to be up there. Wow. What an epic cave. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Oh, there's some uh, ancient uh, finger, finger puppets. I see a dog. So, oh, I stepped in a puddle. Oh, at least it wasn't a skull. <laughs> so you can already see um, all these cigarettes are donations uh, to this particular person. He's got a little hole in his head. I wonder you know, if that was the cause of death. But skulls here. Okay, forest. This is small. Look, it's got a bright light. Got a big bright light. It's okay. Some sprite donations. It's okay. So as we enter this uh, smaller cave, you can see quite a few. So again, more. Yeah, yeah, slippery. So quite a few more caskets, skulls all around every corner. And all the caskets are just stacked up and go way back deep. All right, now this is a uh, kind of cool spot, a good selfie spot. So let's see if we can't get a few photos. So Aru is just now explaining all the different levels. So where we were was down here. That's where we went into the cave. There's a middle class, and it's impossible to make it on the GoPro, but way at the top. That's the noble class, way up there. And just thinking, how in the world did they get up towards the top and enter those caves for those effigies is incredible to think about. Just wrapping up uh, the visit here to think about, so uh, Aru just shared with us that there's a, a red effigy up there. 
that was just buried there in December, so only a few months ago. From a noble family. Yes. And Aru shared that, so the way, they basically had to carry the coffin up the jungle, mm -hmm. and then other people got out there, and then they had to tie the coffin up with string, and essentially like kind of lower and swing it, and then there were people hanging off the edge who pushed the coffin up there. That's pretty incredible. That's incredible. So would kind you, of scary, but pretty cool. Would you say that... Londa. 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 Totally worth it, Cedar? Yeah. Did you like going into the cave? Yeah. What was your favorite part? My favorite part was um, when we saw, when we heard the story about Londa and... Um, Romeo and Juliet? Yeah. In those skulls? Yeah, for that sure. That was pretty cool. Yeah, getting back in there, amazing. So yeah. add this one to your list of uh, kind of unique things to see while you're into Raja. Especially if you want just something a little different where you're going in the dark cave yeah. and climbing around. Getting in there. <laughs> Bring the lights. The phone lights are not adequate. You need no. something like that or, you, or hire a guy. Yeah, it looks like you can hire somebody with a lantern yeah. as well. Yeah, very cool. So just down the way where we saw all those effigies, there's a guy here in this house who's actually making the effigies. This is the effigy of my aunt. <gasps> what? Just, whoa, well, Mike, what are the chances? So this effigy that this guy's making, coincidentally, is Aru's aunt. Yeah. Whoa, Aru. Wow. Oh. Okay, so there's the, there's the photo that this artist is working off of. And it's all hand. Yeah. It's all, all hand carved, and he's going off of uh, the photo. So if you haven't seen the video with Aru's aunt, uh, his sick aunt, uh, check that out right here. It's a great video. It's our kind of our first impressions of Taraja video. And here is her energy. It's my aunt's uh, yeah. effigy. That's so cool. Wow, what yeah. are the chances? So, he, he, he told me. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Now, how much will this cost the family? 25 million. 25 million to have a hand carved effigy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, this the picture, you see? Yeah, uh, of course. Of course. My wow, aunt. fantastic work. Yeah. Enoch. Yeah, yeah. Nelo, bagus, bagus, bagus. No, Enoch. Enoch for the food. food. Okay. Not Enoch. Don't, no. Bagus, not, bagus. Not delicious. Bagus. 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 Oh, wow, that's fantastic. How many of these does this gentleman do uh, a month? Are pira mugaraga biasa ke sanga bulan ito. Si Tana, si tiga bulan teme. Ah, you know, he... He makes kit for three months. Okay, so one of these one effigy. One one effigy takes about what, three months. Three months. Wow, I mean it's so detailed. Now, what will you do with the effigy? Uh, actually, it is symbol of the death came from the noble class mm -hmm. with the mountain tip of buffaloes. It's like a figure or the picture or the photo of the death. Wow. Yes. And will this be, you won't like keep this in your house. This will go. It will be kept in the family grave. Ah, uh, the, the, the mausoleum. Mausoleum, yeah. I see. I see. Wow. And you will sacrifice, there will be 24, at least 24, minimum, minimum 24, 24, 24 buffaloes. buffaloes. Sacrifice. But you know, uh, only my elder brother sacrifice one or two buffaloes. I see. I see. My goodness. So cool. Very fascinating work that this man does i can see he's got at least three made of three jack more wood, yeah? jack wood right yeah now it's uh yellow later it will be brown yeah so he he stains it or does the jack wood turn brown yeah turn brown yeah yeah that i mean that looks so realistic of this gentleman here it's nice so kind of just to see the 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 kind of the beginning well i guess not the beginnings but like this process to here and then that looks incredible, incredible. I mean, the, just the, the, the facial structure uh, very very nice of this.